Hey, welcome back to the garden. My name is Jair and today I'm finally going to show you how I'm building my greenhouse. And not just any greenhouse, but a geodesic dome with a kit from Built With Hubs. Let's go. Before we continue the video, I just want to mention that I'm not sponsored by Built With Hubs and that this will be part one of a short series where I show you how I built my greenhouse. Now let me tell you how it came to be that I chose a geodesic dome over a regular greenhouse. About two years ago, I saw a video of the channel Exploring Alternatives about a company called Arctic Acres and the geodesic grow domes that they built. And when I saw that, I thought, I want one. Well, not exactly the one from the video, that one is way too expensive for me. But I was hooked on the idea to have a dome for a greenhouse. I looked online and I found another company called Built With Hubs that sells a kit that allows you to make a geodesic dome yourself. So I bought one and as some of you know I postponed the entire project for almost a year and a half. Now you might be wondering what's up with this big empty space in front of me? I've actually been reserving this spot for a greenhouse. I bought all the materials to buy a greenhouse but I've kept postponing it because other things were higher on the priority list. But now the time has finally come to set it up in my garden. All right, so this is the box from Built With Hubs. And it's a relatively small box considering what you're making with it. But this box only provides the instructions how to build uh, the dome as well as all the connector balls or the connector points um, that obviously connect all the sticks into one geodesic dome. The idea of the Built With Hubs kit is that you can build a dome relatively cheap and relatively easy at the cost of some strength. Normally geodesic domes are very strong, uh, so strong that you can actually hang from, uh, from the skeleton or from the frame. Built With Hubs themselves stated that these kits are not meant for like a very strong construction that a adult person can hang from, but they are fine to build a greenhouse with, for example, or a chicken run or an aviary. Now, the good thing of the Built With Hubs kit is that they covered the most difficult part of building a dome, which is getting the sticks in the right angle and the right position in order to build the dome. That being said, it is still going to be a fairly strong construction and as with all geodesic domes, it has an advantage over regular greenhouses uh, when it comes to uh, weather influences, especially strong winds. And that is because of the shape of it. Now, let's see what's in this box. Uh, what's in the box? What's in the box? The very first thing you're going to see is, read this first which is all the tips and tricks and uh, of how to construct your dome. These are also found on their uh, website. And if we further open up the box, and then we'll notice a nice little bag in there, which is actually pretty heavy. This is basically it. I have to say they, they do a pretty good job making it visually very easy for you to uh, check what's in the bag or in the box and they just make it a very fun experience. All right, well, let's open this baby up. Right over here you can see all the connector hubs that will eventually go on every corner of the geodesic dome. There are a few connectors that have six points as well as a few that have five points and a lot of screws and a lot of um, other metal parts and then these are going to be all the little connector balls that you should fixate onto your sticks so that they can fit into one of these and that's all of it that's all that's in the back they will explain everything, so it looks quite intimidating at first, but don't worry. If your preparation is on point, the dome will be there in less than an hour. All right, time to prepare all the materials to build the dome. First off, I needed to saw the sticks at the correct length. Built with hubs give the exact number of sticks you need, as well as the length of them, depending on the size of your dome. You can determine all of this via the dome calculator on their website, which is a very handy tool, I must say.
In total, I'm going to need 30 short sticks and 35 long sticks. After that was done, the edges of the sticks were still a bit rough, so it was sanding time. After an hour or two, all 65 sticks were done. Now the next step is optional, but I would recommend it, and that is to drill holes at each side of the sticks. These will be to later attach the connector balls. You can choose not to pre-drill these holes and screw the connector balls in one go, but you'll run the risk of splitting the wood. Then I wanted to weatherproof the wood and give it a nice color. So I got this mahogany varnish. Perhaps needless to say, but it's easier to place multiple sticks next to each other and use a roller instead of painting them one by one with a brush. This is also a lot of work, but it's worth it if you want a wooden frame to last longer. Now to prepare the poles that will be used as a base. This will elevate the entire dome, creating some valuable vertical space. You can again have a preview of this in the dome calculator at the side of Build with Hubs. The poles themselves are 1 meter long and I drew a line at 60 centimeters. The lower 40 centimeters will be hammered into the ground and will act as an anchor for the dome. I painted this part with a black seal to protect the poles from being exposed to too much water in the soil. And before anyone says, oh my god you're putting toxic black death into the soil, this is a non-toxic liquid rubber seal that hardens after it dries. As a side note, I could have opted to create the base out of rectangular beams with steel ground anchors, but that would increase the cost of the project significantly, and so I chose not to do that. The upper 60 centimeters of the poles will be the actual base, and I painted them with the same mahogany varnish. As a last step, it was time to screw in the little connector balls at each side of the sticks. This is a fairly easy thing to do, but again, pretty time consuming. So after a few days of preparing all of the materials, it is finally time to get it all over to the garden. Okay, so we've just unloaded the entire car and now it's time to build up the dome. Once again, how to set up this dome is all explained and easy to understand. And although this footage is sped up, we managed to set up the dome in about 30 minutes. Then it was time to determine where we were going to place the poles that would form the base. We marked the position of the poles by sticking some thin sticks through the lower hubs. Then we cut out the shape of a cross in the landscape fabric and hammered in the first pole. This process needs to be done very carefully because it will determine if your dome will be properly leveled. To make sure all of the poles are equal in height, we used a long stick and a level and continued this with every next pole. Okay, so we've just hammered these poles into the ground. It was quite, quite the effort, um, but we managed to do it. These 10 poles will form the base of the dome. We've also leveled them out so the dome will be as straight as possible. So the next step will be to lift the dome on top of the poles and attach them with some screws and then the whole thing will be elevated even more. Lifting the dome with four people was easy, but even though we measured everything as precise as we could, we ran into a little bit of trouble. 
So we hit a few bumps in the road. Um, one of these sticks actually broke, but luckily we had a spare. So I only need to saw that to the correct length and then we can replace it. Another problem is that uh, we leveled all of the poles, but there's still a little bit of space in between some of the hubs and the poles. So what we're gonna do now is saw a few extra circular planks or circular pieces of wood to fill up that blank space. And then uh, hopefully we can connect the, the dome to the poles properly. But standing in the dome right now, I'm getting really excited to finish up this whole project. And uh, yeah, let's continue. After we corrected our mistakes, it was time to clamp the hubs and lock the frame into place. Once again, the description is fairly simple and this is where the rest of the metal parts come into play. And finally, the kit comes with a ring clamp that is often attached to the highest point of the dome. This allows you to hang something from the ceiling, so to speak, such as a decorative piece or perhaps a string to lead a plant upwards. In the Netherlands, it is custom to plant a so-called May tree next to a house when the highest point of constructing said house has been reached. And so we honored that tradition in our own creative way. Well, that's the frame done and I'm super happy. Thank you so much for watching part one and subscribe if you want to see the next video on constructing the Grotto. Until next time, bye bye.